Hey friends, welcome to Gardening with Creekside and this week's nursery tour. We have got some fun, fun new plants in that I cannot wait to share with you. In fact, uh, my sweet people are still unloading the most recent delivery. A bunch of our customers here in person have been asking about when they are coming. Well, guess what? Here they are. This is our order from uh, our friends up in Michigan. They grow these beautiful, we've got the feathered friends jugas, we've got chick charms, we've got all the succulents and all sorts of things. So we're gonna run through these really quickly because these are some of the cutest things ever. All right, and the vast majority of them are perennials. Yes, that is right. These are gonna be perennials for us with the exception of some of the tropical ones. Now, they have a line of ajugas, which ajuga is a perennial ground cover, and the series is called Feathered Friends. So I'm gonna show you this a great tag, right? So Feathered Friends, these are gonna be hardy in zones four to nine, um, and they are blooming. This is the time of year that they're going to bloom. I still have some of my Feathered Friends ajuga in a pot and it currently is blooming. Great thing is you get all of these great colors and the, fun, the names of them are super fun. Like this is Tropical Toucan. Then you've got uh, Fierce Falcon, which is a very nice near black one. So your hardiness zones are gonna be the same on all of these. There's just a ton of different options for you. Um, this one is the um, Noble Nightingale, but look how different the leaves are on this. So each of these different feathered friends is very different and unique, whether it's the color, it's the texture, it's the size, um, whatever it may be. And the light on this is, <laughs> basically anything anywhere from sun to shade you name it you, they can do it but super really cool cool ground covers and in the winter they are um, evergreens now some of my favorites are these cute sun sparkler sedums um, look at this one this one is wildfire look at the color on that nice and short and compact beautiful colors on them i mean you've got sapphire truffles you've got firecracker this is one of cc's personal favorites this is a lime twister and then plum dazzled i mean they're so cool y'all and then they've got them up here i like this one it's upright this one is the dream dazzler now these are going to be hardy again in zones even colder zones three to nine but the, your sedums need to be in full sun to have that really bright coloration to them. Sedums need that full sun, only eight inches tall, but your spacing is 18 inches. So they're gonna spread out for you. And um, of course, as a sedum, they do tend to like it on the drier side. So got all of those cool things. When you come to the nursery, we have got the living canvases. The living canvases, the best way that I can describe it, and it reminds me is that it looks like something you would see in the ocean, like in the movie, The Little Mermaid, right? They look like corals and, and all these really cool, like underwater um, plants to them. These are the ones that are gonna be um, not perennial unless you bring them inside. So like these guys are going to be, um, we have all sorts of different sizes, right? So you can take, this is a nice little, gosh, I don't know, is that a five inch pot, grande four inch pot? Something around there, you know, but it already has all the mixes in there. So this would be great if you've got somebody that moved into a new apartment or your college kids or somebody that needs a little, needs a little something, this would be perfect. We also have, um, these are always wildly popular, are the bowls and the ovals. So we have them, the bowls and the ovals, both in the chick charms and the living canvases. These are literally tabletop ready. Easter has come and gone. It's crazy that we're already past Easter. So we're gonna be outside more. The temperatures are gonna be more conducive to being outside. And these chick charms are perennials and they can totally handle being outside even right now. Like even if we got a freeze, they can handle it because they are hardy in zones three to eight. 
I leave my chick charms out all winter and they actually get better color when it's cooler. The heat of the summer, they go a little bit more dull, muted, and then in the fall when the cool temperatures come back, boom, those colors come back. So you could leave it like this. If you wanted to pot it in another container, you could. So we've got the bowls, then they call them the ovals, right? Because it's in an oval container. They're nice and packed in there, just beautiful. These are called Sempervivums. The Chick Charms is the series. Sempervivums, Sempervivums, however you want to say it. Hens and chicks. They call them hens and chicks because the hen is the mother plant. And then they will have little chicks that uh, sprout out. Like for example, this would be a chick, right? Because it's coming off of the mother plant. So you've got a little chick right here that you could take that and actually cut it and then restick it later somewhere else and you would have more. So those and then like the living canvas ovals, all of these. These are so wildly popular and it's the perfect time for these to be here because it is the season for that. Let's come on around um, while we're on this theme. While we're in this theme, we have of course the Michael Carr planters. These chick charms, all the sedums, all those things are perfect for this container. This is what I have my uh, Michael Carr planter is in with all the sedums and all of that. They can just fill in and be stunning. When we go over to the pines, I'll show you an example of one that's planted with hens and chicks. It's great. Um, so these are on this side are the hens and chicks more where they are by themselves. So if you want to do that Michael Carr planter and you want to buy just the singles, you could buy just the singles and mix it up. What I did was I bought like a bowl and then I divided out some of it, but the bowl doesn't have some of these colors. So then I added those in. This year, I believe it's new this year. These are called the Chick Charmlets. And these are the little, these are the little babies. Obviously they're geared towards uh, kind of that, that child theme, right? So these are just like the babies of the Chick Charms. Really sweet, little cute, tiny little, um, like look at that. Is that not the cutest little kid size? But if you do have kids, this would be perfect to give to them. It's a little thing they, you know, they forget to water it, great. I mean, it actually kind of works for them, right? Um, so these are super, super sweet and they have a whole variety of those. Um, you can just see all of the beautiful colors that are in here loads of colors. You've got mixes, you've got singles, you've got the giants. These guys will actually get up to be, you can put it in a one gallon container and it will grow to that. So chick charms are here. Lots of fun with the chick charms, the ajugas, the um, sedums, you name it, super fun. Now you may or may not have picked up as we were walking through the nursery that we got a beautiful shipment from our friends uh, with these Spanish lavender topiaries. It's the exact same one I had last year. It was cold hardy. It went through the winter just fine with me. So these are gorgeous. This is such a fun one because of how the bloom is different than say an English lavender or a French lavender. This is a Spanish and it has that great uh, really unique flower on it, but your foliage still smells like lavender as you know it. These would be great in containers. You can put plants around them, right? I mean, how fun, you got the purple and the blue, I mean, the purple and the orange together right here. Put your vermilionaires underneath them. Good. Yes, so that's the thing to do is, like Jerry was saying, a bunch of them were going out today. Use this as your centerpiece and then underplant with something underneath it. We've got el uh, the elephant ears. This is the coffee cups, of course. Uh, to know coffee cups is to love coffee cups. This thing will be ginormous by the end of the season. Depending on where you live, it will be a perennial. Um, I've had mine come back for years and years till we put it in the signature garden and it had to get moved. Um, but these were, you know, we sell them as annuals, but they will be a perennial definitely in zones eight to 11. So it just depends on where you live. Sweet potato vine, the Ipomias, people were asking for these. Depends on which one you want. You want the green, you want the black, you want the heart-shaped leaf, you want the more serrated, I've got a red leaf here. Lots of options for you. So those are all here. 
And then um, trying to think, what else new, annual wise, did we bring down anything new? We just brought some new super bells outside. Okay, so let's go look. Jerry said we have new super bells outside. So let's go um, look at that. While we're walking, we have, oh, yes, the, um, the heaven scent. Y'all, this is, um, it's not a sales tactic. This is, I'm just telling you the truth. We only have a limited number of the heaven scent because we can't get any more, yeah, right? There's one more crop growing. There's one more crop growing, but if you, because we've had several customers that came very, very early on in the season and were interested in the heaven scent, this is a beautiful shade plant for us. It says on the tag, full sun. If you're in the colder zones, it's full sun, not down here. Down here is definitely deep shade. Um, but we, these are ready. These can go out. They can go out right now. Even if we get a frost, we get a freeze. They will be perfectly fine. Mine in the garden is up and nice and big, so you don't have to worry about covering those. Those will be just fine, definitely for sure. Our people have been working so hard this week to bring in um, all of the great color from out, from in the greenhouse to out to here, and it is starting to look like the season is upon us for sure. These are the super bells that Jerry was telling you about. The sun is not in our favor, so I'm just gonna let Jerry walk through and I'll tell you, um, dream sickle, of course, right? So your super bells, your caliber coas are those great little petite, if you wanna call them, they're not the same, but they look like, and people think of them as like petunias. So these are nice little smaller flowers than a petunia. The main difference in your growing is that caliber coas, if you have clay soil like I do, they don't like to go in the ground because they like really well draining soil. If you're down east and you've got sandy soil or extremely well draining soil, then go for it. You can put them in the ground, but hanging baskets, window boxes, any kind of container, these are gonna do great. Just depends on what color do you want, right? You get to choose whatever color you want. Um, we've got the osteos, brought some of the osteos out here because again, they too can handle these cooler temperatures. If it's outside, they can handle cool temperatures because last night we were in the upper 30s. 35. 35. Um, as long as we don't get to some crazy hard, hard freeze for like all night, then these will be fine. I have had my Nemesia outside uh, uncovered for multiple frosty mornings and it is just as happy as happy can be. So lots of options for you if you wanna go ahead and get some color in the ground in containers right now, now is the time to do it. And then of course the petunias are all over here. Going over, I'm trying to hit things that we haven't talked about before, right? So some of the new things that you're seeing, we are growing phenomenal lavender, but ours is not ready yet. So when we were doing our orders, I was like, Jerry, we need to grab some of the phenomenal lavender. This is the best lavender for the South. If you have struggled with lavender in the past, like me, and you're ready to give up on your lavender and you're like, it's just a plant I cannot grow here in the South. I want you to try Phenomenal. That is the advice that my sweet friend Kata gave me and I love it. So we have these available. We will have more of ours when they become, you know, when they grow. Um, but for now we have got Phenomenal. Come get it. Um, the Minardas, beautiful. Oh my gosh, y'all, bee balm, right? You want to attract your pollinators and your butterflies to your garden. You cannot go wrong with Minarda. This particular one is one of my absolute favorites. This is Leading Lady Raspberry. And as you can tell from its growth, it is a super duper, very happy plant. This is going to be hardy in zones four to nine, and it's going to be only 22 inches tall. Old timey Minarda would get huge. This is only 22 inches, so it is a very well behaved, full sun plant. It's great. Now, this, you're gonna be like, what in the world? So, <laughs> we have hostas, we have shade plants out here, kind of in the full sun area. That's because this is the coolest spot for now. It can handle, this is not strong sun right now, so it can handle this amount of sun. Of course, as the season progresses, all this has to go out to the pines. But I just wanted to show you, some of these are the hostas and you'll see the pine needles in them. 
that we were growing out in the pines um, that are out here. So like this one is really cute. This is the Rainbow's End. I love that beautiful chartreuse color, nice and variegated. This is gonna be, um, let me see, size-wise, only 11 inches. So you can tell by the habit on that one, nice and tiny. Then you have Time in a Bottle. I mean, the names of these hostas are just great. So Time in a Bottle is a very nice small leaf on it. It's gonna be 12 inches tall. So these are all kind of those petite hostas. Some more of the Heaven Scent. Let Jerry show you that bloom on it because it does an early spring bloom of that just it's, Jerry says it's hard to do, but it, when the plant is blooming, they're very upright, the blooms, and just a beautiful, it is a beautiful plant, especially for your shade garden. It pairs wonderfully with the Gold Heart Bleeding Heart. So this is a bleeding heart, and it does keep this chartreuse color so stinking fun, especially when you put it in the garden, pair it with some like some blues, like the, whether it's the heaven scent or a blue hosta or the um, Brunner, does not matter. This is such a cool plant. Bleeding Hearts, um, Hardy and Zones three to nine, definitely a shade plant. It can do uh, that kind of, when you're talking about the heat of the summer, it definitely is a shade plant. Um, I was talking to a customer and she was like, this plant was killing me. She said it's died and been resurrected multiple times. When it gets really hot in the summer, it starts to go dormant. So your bleeding hearts aren't dead, they just go dormant. They love it cold. I have a bleeding heart, just a traditional bleeding heart at the house that is, I am not joking y'all, it is this tall and this big, full of blooms. Even with these cold frosty mornings, it doesn't care. Um, the, the Achillea, the Yarrow, the Firefly Sunshine, this is a wonderful plant. It likes it on the drier side. I may or may not have drowned mine last year and killed it. Whoopsie. Um, so live and learn. All right, let me show you that container right quick that I was telling you about. This is the um, Michael Carr pot that has the chick charms in it. So Jerry's gonna try to, uh, you know, the sun, trying to film videos later in the afternoon sometimes it's quite challenging so that's the michael car filled with chick charms in there and so it's just really unique talking about a low maintenance container let the rain hit it you don't have to really fertilize it you just kind of let it go all right now we've got a lot of fun things out here in the pines of course i think we talked a little bit last week maybe um the solomon seal i don't see anything that's oh ooh, maybe we do hold on y'all we got one that's trying to bloom. Now this is a great plant. You get one, two, three. But look, these are gonna be the flowers. They're not opened up yet, but when they open up, they're going to be little sweet white little bells, but they hang on the underneath side. So we got the Solomon seal. Okay, that's not new. So what is new that we have out here? Uh, the Everillo Carex. This is a Carex loves the shade stays chartreuse color it is an evergreen so if you're in those shade gardens and you want a nice big pop of color put this with your hostas whatever um, other kind of shade loving plants that you have my shade lovers who want traditional beautiful um, hydrangeas we have got those this is like the let's dance ariba which is a beautiful reblooming hydrangea from Proven Winners. We've got tough stuffs. We've got all sorts of things. We've got, yeah, the, um, oh yeah, 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 yeah. And we got the, um, also the Mahonia, the Soft Caress Mahonia. So we can hit those up there. We'll talk about those. There's been so many plants that have come in this week because while we do grow the majority of our plants, we can't grow everything. Y'all, let's dance Skyview. This is a new introduction. It was out last year, but it's I mean, relatively new on the market. This is a massive performer, a repeat bloomer. Um, you don't see that a lot in macrophylla hydrangeas. The old timey hydrangeas, they have been bred so that they will rebloom. It is going to be pH dependent, so you're gonna get a color variation on them. They're gonna be two to three tall, two to four wide. So a little bit wider than it is tall and in zones four tonight for tonight 
four to nine. Um, so we've got those. This is a great hydrangea. I want you to try this hydrangea. Uh, the uh, Pittosporum. Pittosporum is a fun evergreen uh, shrub that is going to be more on the petite side. This is from our friends, of course, at Southern Living. This is a mojo, and mojo is going to be three feet tall, three feet wide, part sun, part shade. I would say like filtered sun or morning sun, afternoon shade, go that way. Or if you're under trees like this, that dappled sun, they can handle the afternoon. Hardy in zones seven to 10. So just a really nice, low maintenance, beautiful. It'll get some variegation to it. You've got a ton of new growth popping out. Your older growth will have that creamy white in there. So that's a fun one. And then let's see, what else did we have? Well, we've got the um, Mahonias again from our friends at Southern Living. This is the Soft Caress. Either you love this plant or you don't love this plant because it has a very Asian for me, like a bamboo type feel to it, but it is great for the shade. It is an evergreen and the late fall, like late, yeah, I would say late fall yellow flowers that the pollinators just go nuts over. This is going to be hardy in zones. I'm trying to look on the tag, seven and nine. So that's a neat one. Um, let's see, what else do we have that's new? new 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 because they come out here and our people are so wonderful and they put stuff out and then you're trying to remember now what do we have people are asking about camellias yes we have camellias um this is japonica season where the camellias are blooming here we have one that is this may be greensboro red i'm not sure um it's getting ready to have a bloom on it so our camellias are still blooming the japonicas i have them in the garden that are still blooming and just beautiful if you were looking for, we got some new, yeah, new Lenten roses maybe? No, they just look amazing. They moved them. Okay, so we have got, um, if you're looking for hostas, come on over here. Because remember we talked about this the other, the other week where Jimmy buys a lot of hostas because they're all so cool. And then Jerry kind of fusses at me um, because he's like, you got so many hostas. Hudson Bay from Proven Winners. Love this beaut, like look at that color. This is when hostas are just at their absolute prime. And you can look, like if you, when Jerry pans over to the tables, you can tell who's gonna be the big boys, who's gonna be really upright, and who's gonna be more petite and more um, on the smaller side. Who's nice and bright and chartreuse? Who has some white? Who is more in the blue family? That is the beautiful thing about shade gardens is you can just buy one you know, you could have 10 hostas and they're all different and they would all look amazing together. So the Eucharas are coming out. They're putting on all of their beautiful new growth. So if you've got Eucharas at home, for example, this is um, the Lemon Love. You've got all the new growth right here. Go ahead, this is the old growth. It's just gonna fall away. Get your clippers, clean off all that old growth, let all the new growth come out and it will flush out. So little tip on how to take care of your Eucharist. All right, we're gonna move down to the shrub lot um, because I think, I mean, you can just pan. I mean, there's just so many beautiful hostas. We could do a two hour tour just about hostas, but just know if you're looking for some beautiful hostas, we have got them here at Creekside Nursery for sure. Um, Daylilies, now's a great time to put daylilies in the ground so that way you get all of their beautiful flowers throughout the season. Um, just gorgeous. The tulips are still hanging in there. Uh, they are doing quite nicely. These stay in the shade a little bit more than say like the ones at the berm. Um, they're more full sun. So these are kind of still hanging in there quite nicely. All right, let's see if I can remember all of the new stuff that has come in um, Incrediballs. We have got um, some beautiful Incrediballs. They are on the small side, but they are flushing out. Remember, Incrediballs bloom on new growth. So you're going to have flowers this year on your Incrediballs. That's what I love about my <laughs> tranches that bloom on new growth. 
you get flowers every single year no matter how crazy the weather is you get flowers so people have been asking for incredibles we have got those um, this is a great section for all of your evergreens this is what we call those foundation plantings right so whether you want distilliums or fire chiefs or boxwoods abelia lorpedalum the uh, sunshine ligustrums you have got them um, we got in some new pugster blue butterfly bushes so it is a great time again to get those in they bloom on new growth i promise you will have flowers this year uh, the candy corn spireas oh it is dolly see dolly is new and dolly and candy corn in the beginning look very similar to me but look at that beautiful foliage on that yeah so dolly is new this year thank you jerry for correcting me beautiful sprinter boxwoods these are great i adore sprinter boxwoods if i love boxwoods in general these are beautiful ones okay now i know we got some fun stuff oh the temple of bloom i forgot about that temple of bloom temple of bloom is going to be a very large shrub small tree depends on how you want to look at it if you're familiar with crepe myrtles this is going to have that same shape as a crepe myrtle right multi-trunked um, it will get i think 12 to 15 tall no 6 to 10 tall and wide and it's hardy in zones 5 to 9 when we go to spring meadow nursery of course the home of the color toy shrubs they have in their trial gardens mature temple of blooms and they are stunning beautiful they'll put on white flowers that your butterflies just adore then they'll turn a beautiful red in the fall this is a great large shrub small tree whatever you want to look at it i have one by the chicken coop and i love it i cannot wait to see how it does this year i put it in last year and um yeah it did great in the very first year north poles arborvitaes these are your great evergreen right columners uh they will we've got them in multiple places here at the nursery if you're looking for that nice kind of more of a controlled tree this would be a great one to do um, i'm trying to think Jerry. Oh, we got new puffer fishes. Puffer fish hydrangeas. These are beautiful. Nice shape to them. Nice and stocky. Very, very healthy plants. This one would be, of course, that big, huge bloom on it. Now, I know we got some more fun stuff down here. What we else do we have? Let's go look at it. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. The per pink. So, uh, the Bloomerang Per Pink. So this is, uh, we have two different ones. I think you, maybe you could tell. So we have first on this, this side is the, the taller one. This is the Bloomerang Dark Purple. These lilacs are from Proven Winners. I have both the Dark Purple in the full sun at my house, and then I have Per Pink in the Signature Garden. The Dark Purple, we have found, it. look Jerry, we got blooms. Get in there, look at those blooms. See those beautiful lilac blooms? This is definitely gonna be a sun plant, hardy in zones three to seven. If you're in the south like me, maybe if you can give it a break in the afternoon, that would be really good. But this is the new one, the per pink, because they call it per pink, because depending on the point of view, some people will say they're purple flowers and some people say that they are pink flowers. So they came up with the name per pink still has that great of course lilac uh, characteristics that everyone loves this is going to be more of a petite plant this is going to be three to five tall two to three wide eh, average petite i would say and yeah so in the signature garden this one is doing very nicely i have a couple of them so if you're looking for lilacs we have those we also have let's see what else do we have dear the roses of sharon have flushed out really well just y'all there is just so much out here the roses are really oh the roses because we are about to enter into rose season let's see if we have any buds we'll pick one of them just pick one of them up okay hopefully i won't get jabbed rise up ringo yeah. look at that look at that beautiful foliage of course your new growth has that more of that burgundy hue to it but we have got you know we've got the rise ups we have got 
the Crimas, you've got the Oh So Easies. Um, right, this is not all of them. This is just some of them. Oh, Fizzy Mizzy. Yeah, Fizzy Mizzy. Love the name. Fizzy Mizzy is the landscape shrub of the year. It is a sweet spire. Now, it is pushing out new growth. So there's nothing wrong with this plant. It's pushing out, so you've got little leaf buds all over it. Of course, um, those sweet spires are just going to be really fun because they have those really nice like bottle brush white flowers on them. Very upward, very you know upright kind of plant. It is going to be two to three tall and wide. And this is going to be more in hardy in zones five to nine. So if you're wanting something easy in your garden, We've got the Fizzy Mizzies and the Wygillas. So we have got lots of beautiful Wygillas. Typically in the South, we don't think a lot about of Wygillas, Wygillias, however you want to say it, tomato, tomato. This is Vino Verde, which is one of the newest ones. It's one of my favorites because the foliage on it, as it comes out, is a variegated. So it's green in the middle and then it's black on the outside. Honestly, at this stage, you might think there's something wrong with the plant because you're like, is it black? Is it green? Did it get burnt? No, it's just a variegated foliage. They get bigger, green in the middle, and black on the outside, and they do bloom. And then if you want like a darker Wygilla, then we've got those over there that Jerry can show you. Um, those nice dark foliage. So if you've got, you know, maybe hydrangeas or you've got something that's a nice, a boxwood, um, a sun-loving camellia, right? It, like a green glossy leaf. You put this up next to it and it would be really, really pretty. These do bloom more on old growth. So this is why they're really kind of tall and upright is because we don't want to prune them until after they bloom. And then once they bloom, then you can shape them up very much like an azalea, right? So after it blooms, then you can trim them up um, on that as well. Uh, if you are in the market for Japanese maples, we have got Japanese maples, whether you want, um, we have got some that are the more, like, not weeping habit to them. Um, where's the name? Where's the name? Crimson Queens, that's why I'm going to make sure. So the Crimson Queens, right, so it is more of that weeping habit to them. Um, they're getting ready to push out some and a couple of them already in the back are pushing out some leaves on them. Very, that true burgundy, very dissected leaf to it. If you want something more upright, this is the Emperor One. And the Emperor One is definitely going to be more sun, right, Jerry? Mm -hmm. Yep. So upright columnar, but can handle the sun. Crimson Queen might need a little bit more shade in the afternoon. We've got uh, the... Ooh, fire glow. Fire glow is what we have in the backyard. It too is a full sun Japanese maple that you can do here in the south, sun up, sun down. They can absolutely, these two for sure, can handle those full suns. We have got the, um, this is the paper bark maple, which is really fun. This, because it's called a paper bark, because if you see the bark, it's peeling, right? So it's like a papery, um, if you know, like crepe myrtles, some that where they, you know, shed their skin. Same thing with the paper bark. This loves water. So if you have an area that stays a little bit more wet, put a paper bark in there. Had this at the chicken coop. You know, there's a lot of these things, you know, that we have. I'm like, oh yeah, I have that too. So there's a lot, there's dogwoods in here. You name it. They're starting to put out some, some little leaf buds, but these are all the B and B's. They're easier to plant because they're not a big 15 gallon and they are big, beautiful trees. Uh, came to us from Oregon. That's where we ordered them from. But Lots of fun things happening here. It is definitely go time at the nursery, so come see us. Don't forget, on April the 13th, Greg Niewald, who is the owner of Power Planter, will be here for a free Power Planter workshop. There's no need to sign up, just come on. He will be here leading that workshop for us. He is a hoot, he is a real treat. You will enjoy talking with him and getting to know him. Food trucks coming all the time. Just check out our events page on the website to see you know, what food truck is coming in the weekend. And uh, yeah, it's a good time here. As always, we so appreciate you. Y'all have a great day. We'll see you in the next video. Bye, friends.